Hello, this is April Tarango, your math coach, and I just wanted to show you a cool way that you can use Legos to show conceptual understanding of fractions to your students. So we're going to use this Lego as the unit. That's going to represent one whole unit. Therefore, these two together would each represent a half. So I'm just going to write a half. Each of these is a half. And I got three of these. So these are going to represent thirds. So I'm going to put them over here. Each one of those is a third. Also, I have these four that equal one whole unit. So these will be fourths. And then these tiny ones over here, this size, get them all. There's six of them that represent that will equal one whole unit. So those are going to be sixth. So I'm going to put that over here, sixth. Okay, so these are going to be the Legos that we're going to work with today. And first we'll look at equivalent fractions, and then we're going to look at how to divide fractions using these Legos. Okay, so using these Legos, we're going to represent the equivalent fractions 4 sixths is equal to 2 thirds. So first I need my sixth. Remember these little ones were the sixth. So I need four six. And I want to show that that's equivalent to two thirds. Here are my two thirds. Remember we're using this as the whole unit. So that's four six. There's the other two. Four six. And then this is two thirds. Right? So we want to show that four six is equivalent to two thirds. Well, you can just set them side by side like this or you could even do what kids would do if they were building with legos they would stack them in fact that's why i think legos are an excellent manipulative to show things with fractions conceptually because when you're building with legos you're always thinking about like i need one more lego i need two more legos so they're always thinking about how many legos do they need so it makes a lot of sense to use legos to represent fractions okay so now we're going to look at two-fourths and see how it's equivalent to one-half so here's the whole remember these were the halves so I'm gonna put one half over here and then the fourths were these so I'm going to pick two-fourths and one-half together to see how they're equivalent see how they're the exact same size you can even stack them on top of each other or set them next to each other to see that they're the same size. So two-fourths is equal to one-half. Okay, now we're going to show you how to divide fractions using these Legos. We're going to divide one-half divided by one-sixth. The important thing when you want to show division of fractions conceptually is that you should always word it how many sixths are in a half. It's important that you word it that way. Think of like if the problem were 15 divided by 3. You would say how many 3's are in 15. So it's going to work the same way. It's just important that you word it this way so they can get a good conceptual understanding of what we're talking about. So I'm going to take my half fraction. Here's my half. And the 1 sixth. 1 sixth. So this is 1 half divided by 1 sixth. We just want to know how many 1 sixth are in 1 half. How many of these would fit into there? And this is where, like I said, um, kids use Legos all the time. They're used to building on there and they want to see how many of these would it take to cover this up. Well, there's one, two, three. So it takes three. The answer is three. How many one-sixth are in one-half? Three. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. Two-thirds divided by one-sixth. Remember, <coughs> remember, it's important to word it how many one-sixth are in two-thirds. So I need to start with my two-thirds, which were these, two-thirds, and my one-sixth was the little ones. We want to know how many one-sixth are in two-thirds. How many of these does it take to match that? You can either set them underneath, side by side like that, or you could just build it on top. This time I'm going to set them underneath. So I want to see how many of those would it take to match. How many of those are in one-sixth, or in two-thirds, sorry. <coughs> okay, so let's try it out. One, two. Three, four. So the answer would be four. You can check to make sure by using the standard algorithm. But this, it's important not to do the standard algorithm first. You want to show them conceptually so they understand what they're doing. And then you can 
use the algorithm. It's kind of like a shortcut. It's like a trick to get the answer. It's not really. Well, no, I think that works for doesn't really give them good conceptual understanding to do this multiply by the reciprocal trick. So what do you get? Twelve thirds, which is four. Okay, last one. So remember, this was our whole unit, one. So I need to find out what, how many one sixth are in one fourth. One fourth divided by one sixth means how many one sixth are in one fourth. This is my whole unit of one. So these are fourths. We want to know how many, I'll use that one as my one fourth. That's one fourth. How many one sixths, how many of these are in there? Use a different color. Okay. How many of these are in there? How many one fourths are in one sixth? So the tricky part about this one is that it doesn't quite go. It goes one time, but then you kind of need like more. Like how much more? You need like half of these, right? So it would go in there one time and like half of another one. So our answer then is one and one half. You can check by using the standard algorithm, multiply by the reciprocal. You get six fourths, which is one and two fourths, which is one and a half. I think this was a lot easier than that, actually. If you kind of can use your conceptual understanding, you can figure it out.